Okay, today I'm going to be going through the uh, hybrid loop example. Uh, for those who don't know what I'm referring to when I say hybrid loop, basically uh, a combination of vanilla combinators and the uh, FCPU combinator itself to get the speed from vanilla combinators while also having the intelligence from the uh, FCPU combinator. Uh, FCPU uh, isn't as fast as a vanilla combinator. Uh, these things will like scream uh, like crazy, while these only fire per game tick. These can actually go multiple ticks, I think. They can do multiple iterations per uh, single game tick or something like that. I forget what it is exactly, but uh, you'll notice there's a huge difference between the two. And if you ever want to uh, do things that are very... Um, I wouldn't say resource intensive, but things where you have to iterate through uh, like a large mass of things uh, very rapidly. Uh, say, for example, if you had a. Um, what do I got here? A little uh, tile scanner or something like that from AI, and you wanted to uh, rapidly scan through all the different tiles in an area. Uh, you could do that with an FCPU, but it's usually best to use something like a uh, vanilla combinator. Uh, little looping uh, contraption to go through that much faster. And uh, what the hybrid part is, is that instead of just uh, using the normal loop, what uh, the FCPU does is it basically just sets the, um, the initial values uh, and then just uh, tells it to turn on, turn off, and uh, whatnot. Okay, I'm going to go through the uh, hybrid loop here uh, of what each and every one of these little clusters of uh, components are, well, combinators are for. Uh, the actual hybrid loop itself is really just these two combinators right here. Uh, it, it's, if you look up in the, the Factorio documentation, I think this is just like one of those uh, settable counters. If you look up the uh, counter circuit on uh, Factorio's wiki, that's basically what these are here. And the virtual signals are pretty much set by the uh, FCPU. Now, what I wanted to do here, uh, also I'm just going to quick mention this right here is more or less a uh, little buffer to prevent any kind of feedback signals because I need to isolate these uh, different lines. Because I need this to connect, I need to uh, connect this to uh, both this green line and this green line, but keep it isolated. So this right here is just a buffer to uh, keep those separate. Uh, same thing here, this is also a buffer, by the way. So, yeah, I'll just uh, put that right off the bat. I have uh, these two little uh, sets of uh, combinators added on. So this way, instead of having to deal with a single uh, virtual signal, instead of having to convert that, which, you know, you could uh, run like a virtual signal or whatever you want through these combinators and then uh, run it, you know, and then just uh, convert it through. I wanted to do something that was really arbitrary. So this way... With this setup, what you can do is you can set any number of uh, signal types. In this case, it's going to be um, an express belt and uh, iron ore. And basically what you do is you feed the types that you want to have uh, multiplied by this device uh, in parallel. You know, you can use it usually just for one, but just for, uh, uh, I would say, demonstration's sake, I'm going to show what can happen where you can uh, do two signals. You can put as many signals in this thing as you want. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to store some signals here, multiply it out by the uh, virtual signal, which is coming off of this uh, counter here. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this as the uh, signal. I call it a signal stripper because basically what it's going to do is it'll cancel out the uh, virtual signal I, and I'll be left with uh, whatever else is left. So in this case, it's just the, uh, you know, the express belt and the iron ore that's multiplied by the given value that's required. Okay, so what I'm going to do here to get this thing started is first I'm going to uh, move a little uh, S virtual signal here into the uh, memory unit to let the thing know that I'm going to be writing to the thing or saving to the memory. So I'm just going to click that, send an S with a value of 1, then set the, uh, well, then output the two types right here as well. And these are shown up in the output of the FCPU. And yeah, they're also being received. If you uh, look here at the side of the screen, as you can see, the uh, inputs are being received. So that's all good. This thing now has uh, a hold of those types. And now all I need to do is 
is stop writing out. Uh, basically, I need to set this uh, S signal here from one back to zero. And once I set it back to zero, what I'll do is I'll keep these two types that I pushed into it, and then I'll lock those in place. So do that right there. And as you can see, let me. So right now it's outputting that, but yep, this is doing that. Actually, uh, here we go. Next part. Now, as you can see, it has it locked in place, right? Because nothing is being output here whatsoever. And these two uh, signals that we want to uh, be feeding through this contraption are now stored in the uh, memory cell. Okay, so that's the first part, is to get the memory working. All right, and the uh, next part is just setting up the loop and running it. So all you need to do is just push in the values that you want. First, I'm gonna engage the reset thing here just to set the thing equal to zero and to uh, enable this, well, to open this thing up for being reprogrammed and then initialized and all that good stuff. So now that that's done, we have the uh, starting value or initial value that's what uh, I is going to be equal to. Let me get the hell away from this thing so it shuts up. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I is the initial value, or where this uh, counter is going to start from. It's going to count up from this point. So if, uh, in this case, I'm going to just have I as one. So it's going to start from one. It's going to count up to the final value, which is uh, stored as Z. The uh, reason why I ch chose Z is that was, you know, it's kind of like a carryover from the uh, factorial wiki, so yeah, I just you know, left it as it is. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do here is just uh, move 100 into uh, Z, just push that into the output as well. So now what's going to happen is, is I'll just go from 1 to 100. Now what I'm going to do is just disable this uh, little reset signal to uh, trigger the whole system to go off. And what's going to happen is, just going to, yeah, just going to set this to zero. Watch that. And as you can see here in real time, let me uh, do that again. So that's the advantage of this system right here is that it's multiplying an arbitrary signal which you can store or you can just feed the thing in uh, externally. So technically I could also just get an out external data stream of, uh, well, get some external types or whatever and also multiply it by this counter or something like that. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But uh, that's the, ad, the advantageous part of having this uh, larger setup, is that you can grab any type of signal you want and iterate through it uh, in real time. Yep, so this way, if you want to rapidly iterate from like one value to a, another value across a given range or something like that, and you want that signal to uh, be going out every single value uh, into the rest of your network. So if you want the thing to not just uh, give you the end result, like you can see right here, but to go from like one to a hundred and uh, send not one to a hundred virtual uh, signals, but one to a hundred, whatever you want. In this case, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, it's the iron ore and the um, express belt. But whatever you want to uh, put out at a high rate, you can do it with uh, this little extra bit of uh, hardware. Otherwise, you could just use the FCPU and a basic counter here, set the thing, uh, you know, just do the uh, last part here. That's all it is. And uh, you're all set. So yeah, the basics of a hybrid loop is just these two little uh, combinators hooked together into what's called a counter. So the in Inside right here is just, you know, if the initial value is less than or equal to the uh, final value, output one, and then it's got a bunch of feedback loops, so it just keeps on increasing until this is uh, false. And uh, this right here is just to reset the thing, this little R value. And yeah, so that's all you really need is just these two right here, and this if you want a basic counter. And the only thing in this entire script that is necessary is just this part right here. So this is the only thing that's important. So you engage your reset just to get the thing to uh, go from back, just basically to uh, drop its old value, you know, to wipe its memory. 
and then you set a new initial value, new final value, and then in order to uh, get the thing to work, you just turn the reset value from one back down to zero, and then it just goes off and does its thing. So that's the basics of a hybrid loop. And if you want something that's more sophisticated, because I'm sure somebody would want to ask, uh, here's this little system as well. All right, well, I hope you like this little demo. Please let me know if I missed anything or if there's any questions or comments that you have. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and, uh, yeah, hope this helps. Take care.